Shopping. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning. Welcome to Build Your Composite Simulation IQ webinar. I'm your host, Dean Rose, a support specialist and outdoors nut coming to you from the rocky tops of Wyoming. Today we're going to talk a little bit about Helios PFA and more specifically one of the tools included within this package called Advanced Material Exchange. This webinar series is brought to you by your friendly support neighbors here at Autodesk. You don't just buy a product, you buy our expertise. Let's start off by talking about what's in the news. Uh, I wanted to briefly mention accounts.autodesk.com. This is a, a really good uh, piece of information to have. You can go here, log in, log support cases, download your products, and view any updates that we have for the products. Next, I wanted to talk about cutting edge development. I know we're not talking about the 1992 hit starring a washed up hockey player turned figure skating sensation. I'm talking about the new features our developers on the product team are currently churning out in response to your feedback. I'm excited for a lot of great stuff that's coming out in the near future, so stay tuned for updates as they come out. And then lastly, I wanted to cover simhub.autodesk.com. This is a, a great simulation area. We have a simulation blog where you can ask questions, um, comment on articles that our product teams are pushing out on various topics related to specific products, uh, specific functionality within those products, or uh, general features like accounts.autodesk.com and how to log a support case. So uh, a, a great area to check out. Uh, we also have videos about simulation on Sim TV. We have learning tools available. Uh, we have an upcoming events calendar. So if you're looking for uh, things that support is presenting about in the future, you can check it out there. And we also have an idea station forum. Uh, if you have a question about a product, uh, something you're trying to attempt, and you don't see it available, you can post your feature requests on there. Uh, the product teams review those quite frequently and will evaluate those for incorporation later on. Uh, just a, a few things that we have available for you as an Autodesk consumer. All right, on today's agenda, we're going to talk about Helios PFA for those of you just visiting for the first time. And then we're going to jump into Advanced Material Exchange and do a brief overview uh, what it is, and talk about the workflow. And then to wrap this up, we're going to reinforce everything we've covered by doing a live demonstration. And before we get started, um, since I'm starting to, to mention a few pieces of software that work in conjunction with AME, or Advanced Material Exchange, I wanted to run a poll and see how many of you are currently a moldful user. And so we'll launch a poll here. And feel free to select uh, the option. You know, if you use it all the time, occasionally, uh, some of you uh, may be new to Autodesk products or maybe working in another environment, you might not have heard about this. And don't be afraid to vote. Uh, we've got a little over half the people have voted. So I'll go over, we'll go ahead and close that poll. And we can see about 60% of you have not heard of Moldflow. And 40% of you use it, use it occasionally. We don't have any heavy uh, users in Moldflow. So uh, just kind of preface our conversation uh, we're not going to go into a lot of detail uh, about the workings of Moldflow. Uh, we'll just kind of do a brief introduction there and how it interfaces with what we're doing. And I want to mention there's a link down here at the bottom. And after we do this presentation, I will upload this PowerPoint uh, document for you to review, as well as some model files. So 
uh, you can go through and, and practice this on your own. And in addition, if you're looking for additional information, we also have the documentation that's available online. All right, so let's get started talking about Helios PFA. One of the biggest engineering challenges of our time is how to create products that are lighter, faster, and stronger. A technological revolution helping to realize this is composite materials. Examples of the benefits of composites are in the automotive, aerospace, marine, and sporting, good, sporting goods industries. Autodesk Helios PFA, which stands for Progressive Failure Analysis, uses the power of finite element analysis to provide deeper insight into the behavior of composite structures. Helios PFA is used to predict damage initiation, damage propagation, and ultimate failure. This exceptional accuracy will help you realize the benefits of the composite material revolution. Now a little bit about advanced material exchange. This utility is intended to provide a graphical interface between an as-manufactured simulation to the structural simulation environment. This has typically been a challenge in the past. Variations in materials, such as short fiber orientations, are often unknown and overlooked. This can lead to oversimplification and just incorrect answers. Advanced material exchange can map the fiber orientations from the as-manufactured part and material data, including residual strains that contribute to warpage from mold flow to their abacus and ANSYS structural environment. So let's talk a little bit about this workflow. The workflow for AME, uh, you'll need a mold flow study file. Uh, that's from the uh, mold flow product. And then you'll also need your structural model file. And you'll also need some nonlinear test data. And we'll map from the mold flow study file to your structural model file. We're going to export that structural file with the mapped information, execute the structural file, and then we're going to review those results. And here's some information on how this all works. So here we have our structural model. Uh, this is within the Abacus environment. Today we'll be working uh, with our live demonstration uh, utilizing Abacus as our structural interface. Here we can see the meshed part. As we zoom in, we can see the structured mesh and we can see the elements through the thickness here. Uh, we can see that we have about six elements through the thickness and that's important information that we'll, we'll cover a little bit more in detail later. Here we can see some output from the mold flow environment. And we can see the number of elements through the thickness here is also six. So uh, we always want, uh, just a, a quick tip for everybody, uh, when you're doing this type of uh, uh, work in AME, we want to make sure that our structural file has uh, the same as or, or greater number of element thickness as our mold flow simulation. We can see some information here uh, about how material orientation can be affected by not having the proper number of elements through the thickness. Uh, we can see on the y-axis here we have a, a value of the material orientation. This value can uh, be changed or has a range from 1 to 0.33 as a lower bound. And that just signifies uh, one would be oriented in the flow direction, and then 0.33 would be a, a completely isotropic uh, orientation. So we can see as we increase the number of elements through the thickness that we converge on a, a more accurate value for the material orientation. And here's a little preview of what the AME environment looks like when we start to import our uh, structural file and our um, mold flow file. And this is part of the uh, translation process to make sure that both of our, uh, our plaque from the mold flow assembly is oriented in the same direction as our 
structural model. Uh, we can see down below, uh, we have some options to orient these parts uh, together, and we'll go through this in the live demonstration as well. And here we can see we've translated this part. Uh, we have some visual confirmation there. And then we also have some options here for what type of analysis uh, we want to do. Elastic plastic is the default selection. And here we see an option a window that we have for importing material data. This would be the stress strain data uh, from our experimentation. We can just do a copy and paste, drag this in here, and uh, import that very easily. And here's an example of the stress strain data that I was talking about. You can see that we have six categories of values, stress, strain, angle, temperature, humidity, and strain rate. And here we've copied these values from an Excel spreadsheet and just pasted those in here. We can plot this information. Here we have our experimental data and then our AME material model has, has fitted uh, the, the calculations that we'll be using for our analysis. Here's a visual representation. On the left, you can see our structural model, and you can see the orientations have been mapped properly from the mold flow simulation on the right. As we zoom in, we can see a closer detail of how those material orientations are being imported. Uh, they're mapped to the Gaussian data points for each element. And then lastly, once we've done all this, we can start to look at executing our model. Uh, this is a command shell that comes provided with, uh, as an abacus or a Autodesk utility with Helios PFA. Uh, it's properly mapped for all the Autodesk commands that you may need. And we can execute the model uh, that we've exported in our structural environment right from here. All right, so now we can get into the live demonstration portion of this webinar. And I have a picture of a demolition derby here, which is a big fear uh, that I have of what will happen. Uh, but I've practiced this a few times, so I think we'll be good to go. So I'll bring this information up. And we'll start by opening our AME environment. So here I have a, a brand new AME environment that I've just opened. And we want to start by importing our models. Uh, we'll need to import the structural model and the mold flow model. Uh, up at the upper left here on the, on the ribbon, uh, this ribbon is very similar to all the, um, a lot of other Autodesk products. Uh, as far as function. So typically you'll start in the left and work your way from left to right. We'll start by importing a structural model. The interface allows us to easily navigate to where the file is located. So I have an INP file here from our Abacus environment. We can see the part here. Select our dimensions millimeters and select OK. Now we can view this part uh, within the AME interface. Now we'll go to importing our mold flow model. And here I can see that I have a mold flow study file. I'll go ahead and select that and select open. And it's going through a few processes here, reading the file, processing it, translating some of the information, and then we'll finally get a visual indication of the model. All right, and when it imported it, it's identified that these models are not aligned. So what we wanna do is use the interactive alignment tool 
And this gives us some visual confirmation of what we're doing here. Uh, there's no need to have any previous knowledge of, of the orientation um, of each part. So what we can do, uh, we can see that uh, we need to rotate this part and translate it. So under the operations, we have two options. We'll select rotation, define 90 degrees. We're going to rotate it about the x-axis. We'll select apply and we can see that the part's been rotated. Now let's translate it. We're going to move it 20 millimeters in the x direction and 52 millimeters in the y direction. We want to get this part down in plane with this part. We'll go ahead and select apply. Uh, we can see that this, this part has been uh, moved in plane here. We can select OK. Now it's going to check, verify that everything was done correctly. It gives us a green light. All right. So now we need to import some material data. We'll select the Material tab from the ribbon. And we'll select Add Nonlinear Material. This opens up our Import Material Data dialog box. And I have some material data here. And it's just in Excel format. And we can copy and select this. Or select it and copy it. Let's not do that. And a tip here, uh, one thing you've noticed I did not do was select the headers. Uh, we don't want to do that. Uh, AME doesn't need this information, so we'll leave it where it is. Right click, do a paste, and we can see here that we've imported all the values correctly. We can even do some confirmation here, uh, comparing some of the values uh, we see, um, if we scroll down to the bottom, we can see 72.78282. Scroll down to the bottom. Uh, we can also see this uh, material uh, information has been plotted correctly. So let's go ahead and plot this data and see what it looks like. Now it's fitting it with the AME material model. And we can see some plots here. Uh, we have a plot of the measured value and the zero degree, zero degree orientation. And we also have some values uh, from the 90 degree orientation from our experiment. And we can see that AME has created a curve fit to match both of those. And we didn't have a 45 degree, so AME takes a, a best guess based on some information that we've provided for that 45 degree curve. We can select the temperature. Go ahead and select, select the select button and we'll close this. We're all done in this environment so we can go ahead and select OK. Close out that information. And now we're back in our AME exchange environment. Next, we're going to map the results. And since this project uh, process takes uh, some time, uh, roughly five or six minutes, um, we're going to go ahead and skip forward the magic of television. And I've already done this previously. And so we can see here uh, an example of the mapped orientations from our mold flow part as manufactured. And this has been translated to our coupon that we're going to use in our structural simulation. And we have uh, the full ability to navigate within here. Uh, you can see that the both screens are synced together. So as we rotate and manipulate one side, uh, the other side manipulates as well. So that's, that's really convenient. And from here, uh, we can zoom in. Uh, just check out some of these orientations. Uh, make sure that, that nothing is, has gone poorly. And we can now export to our structural package.
And one of the things here, um, up until this point, the mold flow and the the, the mold flow anal analyst and the structural engineer have been on different paths. Uh, AME provides a bridge to link these two paths together. Uh, it allows the mold flow analyst to provide the structural engineer with some information about the as manufactured part. So um, no longer need to create assumptions or or estimates of, of how this material has been oriented in the part. So we'll go ahead, select the export to structural package. And here we have a nice dialog box and this is going to allow us to browse to where we want to output this file. And we'll go to our C drive since that's where we want to be. Created a folder here. And we'll see that I've already done this um, as far as getting our simulation set up. Uh, one little tip I have uh, if you're going to be doing this. Uh, we can see the file name is quite long, so what we can do is go ahead and select this file that we imported and give it some sort of appending uh, notifier or identifier um, that we've mapped this uh, information. So we can put mapped there. And once we've done uh, identified where we want to save this file, uh, we can select the output, uh, export button now. Go ahead and select that. And it gives us some indication that we were successful, so that's good. And now we can execute this model uh, the same way we would any other Abacus file. So I'll go ahead and open up the command shell. And this is available through the Autodesk start menu uh, underneath the Helios PFA. And it, like I mentioned before, we have all the paths set. So um, some of you may encounter issues if you try to run one of these commands, uh, say in the Abacus command line. Uh, those paths may not be set appropriately, so you may get a message that says uh, a command could not be identified. And so you'll want to make sure you're in this blue and green command shell environment. So to start, we'll navigate to our working directory. That's where I have this input file. And then we'll just input the commands that we want to use you know, to run Abacus. And then we'll specify the input file. Select enter. And we're off and running. And just to show everybody uh, what's going on here, uh, we get some files generated when we're launching an abacus analysis. And those some of these files are very useful. Uh, we have a log file here that's going to show for checking out licenses. Um, a lot of this information is really good for troubleshooting. And so we can see uh, this file that I ran previously. Uh, we have an STA file. This gives kind of a, a solve log and I'll open this up here so we can see. Uh, records the history of increments, iterations, and also gives us an indication when that analysis has been completed successfully. So if something goes wrong, we don't have any results, uh, look for this STA file. Uh, you can get some confirmation from that. And another useful file we have here is something generated with Helios PFA. That's the .mct file that gets generated. We can also open this up in a notepad environment. A simple text file. Uh, it gives some information here. You are getting uh, invalid results or an error message associated with P Helios PFA. This is some information you can provide to us uh, that gives some build information, uh, information about where the materials and user subroutines are being called from. Uh, we can cover this information in a 
webinar in the future, uh, probably a little bit deeper dive than we're looking to uh, go here. Uh, one thing you may be interested in here is some of the state dependent variable output that we have. Uh, this is unique for the type of analysis that you're trying to run. So these SDVs can change uh, from analysis to analysis. Uh, when doing this uh, type of short fiber analysis, SDV1 represents the rupture state. Uh, we, we give a nice color uh, indication one is ruptured or one is not ruptured and two is ruptured. So we get a very easy to understand visual indication of, of when we've had some material damage occur. And some of these other values um, may be of interest to you as well. We'll go ahead and close this. And since I've had this uh, file run earlier, I have it open here in the Abacus environment. I'm using the Abacus viewer for 614-2. And I've opened up the ODB. And we have some results here. Uh, when you first open up the model, um, you'll probably see something uh, like the uh, von Mises stress uh, being displayed. Um, it'll probably look like that. You can view the contour. And the part will be at the end of the analysis. And we'll see some very wild stuff going on. We can progress back through uh, to the beginning of the simulation and progressing up until the point where we start to see some, some damage occur. And right around step 43, we start to see some, some damage occurring, some necking. Uh, we can also change our output to SDV1. And we can see here uh, the entire model before any damage has occurred is all in a state of one, so not ruptured. And so here we change it from a banded to a quilt plot. So now we can identify elements that are experiencing damage. So we can see the red elements uh, are fully failed or fully damaged. And we can change our, um, our scope here uh, to just represent one and two, zero, one and two. And so that'll uh, give us a little better indication. We won't see this rainbow effect here, but so this is a, a great way to take our as manufactured simulation from mold flow into our structural environment. That's one of the main purposes of AME. And that is uh, information that I have today as far as the workflow. We won't get too deep into viewing these results uh, unless users or viewers have specific questions about what we have. Let me open up my PowerPoint. And you can see today we've uh, introduced uh, Helios PFA to those of you that may not be familiar with, with uh, what the Helios product line is doing and our emphasis on composite simulation. And we've also introduced AME. Uh, how that fits into your workflow if you're a mold flow analyst and you're looking to do structural simulations on those as manufactured parts. Uh, this is a tool that gives you the ability to do that. And also, if you're a structural engineer that um, may be making some assumptions and you don't have a lot of information about uh, where this uh, as manufactured part, these material orientations are, um, this gives you a tool to also import that information and use that in your structural analysis. And lastly, we covered the workflow and we did a live demonstration. And that's all the information I have today.
if anybody has any questions, feel free to put them in the uh, window. I have a couple of polls here still, if you're uh, interested in the information. Sure, we can go through those now. Yeah, um, I launch this one here. And for those of you still still following along at home, uh, Marwan is conducting the polls. He's another support specialist here at Autodesk. All right, we got a lot of votes coming in, so it looks like about 25% uh, equally between Abacus and Ansys users. Doesn't look like we have any simulation mechanical users, which is probably good because this tool uh, wouldn't provide you uh, much benefit since we don't interface with that environment. And then 50% are other, so I'm assuming probably some NAS TRAN users out there. Have another poll here, last one. And I was just interested in uh, people that were attending and what kind of materials that they're working with. Uh, this webinar was primarily focused around uh, the capabilities for short fiber simulation, uh, but Helios PFA also works for unidirectional materials as well as wovens, uh, plane weaves, uh, and more advanced harnesses like four, five, and eight harness materials. And it looks like the audience is fairly dominated by short fiber usage with a little bit of unidirectional. So a good audience for today's webinar. All right, and so I'm going to pop into the questions panel here and see if we have anything outstanding. And it looks like we had a question about, is it possible to perform a geometrical non, geometrically non-linear analysis for composites? And I think uh, one of the deans on the call uh, answered that one. And it says both geometric and material nonlinearity can be considered using Helios AME. So. And we'll stay on for just a few more minutes if anybody has any questions. Uh, we'll try to get to that, and then um, if we if we don't have time to get to it, or if it's outside of the scope of this, we'll follow up with you individually. So don't be afraid. All right, I guess we'll start wrapping this up. Um, any of our staff in attendance, uh, if you have any comments, feel free to chime in now. And if not, uh, I just want to point out that the, today's presentation can be downloaded at the link on the bottom of the screen uh, once it's made available. So it uh, should be available uh, shortly after this. So feel free to go up there, uh, download this presentation, look at the sample files, and if you have Helios PFA, you can run through that. If not, 
uh, search for this product and, and you can view it on our website. A lot of good videos uh, speaking about some of the capabilities and features of our products. Uh, we also have a lot of online documentation. I can pull that up and give you a quick preview of what that looks like. We have a, everything from what's new, a quick start guide. We also have some video tutorials. Uh, one of our learning experience engineers, uh, Mike Lebsack, goes through and, and does a great job on some of these. So feel free to browse through on this. And we also go down to even the theory manual, some of the technical information about what's going on behind the scenes. All right, and it doesn't look like we have anything else today. Uh, no more questions coming in. I want to thank everybody for showing up. I uh, appreciate your attendance, and we'll look forward to having you on the next Build Your Simulation IQ. All right, thanks for attending. Have a great day, everybody.